If you are new to buying an electric violin, it might be difficult to know where to start, especially when you are looking at a five-string instrument. There are different types and brands of the violins out there. Glasser, Yamaha, MSI. So in this video, I'll give you my thoughts on the advantages and disadvantages of each and help you decide which one is right for you. Hey, my name is Mateusz and on this channel I do reviews, tips and tests of equipment geared towards string players as well as other musicians who look for technology that will empower their art. If you are new here, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can easily find me in the future and also note that all the equipment mentioned in this video has links in the description below. So let's jump into it. Glasser AE, Yamaha SV255 and MSI Renaissance are very nice electric violins at three different price points. But when it comes to choosing which one would work best for you and your playing style, which one is the best choice? I know there's a lot of you out there that have strong feelings about what are the best electric violins. So please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if I missed anything, go ahead and share your experience to help others decide. My perspective is that of a classical violinist. So please be gentle and uh, yeah, just, Keep that in mind. Also, make sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to tell you which instrument I personally decided to buy and why. Another important thing to note here is that there are four string versions of all the instruments uh, that we're looking at here today. So a lot of the information in this video will be applicable to that normal four string setup. Let's dig in. Glasser AE, five string acoustic electric violin, is made of exposed carbon fiber, giving it a very cool look. It uses electronics developed in partnership with a Bartolini, a California company famous for their guitar pickups. The volume knob is attached to the tailpiece and the bass treble controls are built into the chin rest. Interesting idea. If you don't like black, there's six other colors to choose from. Blue, green, orange, pink, purple, and red. The neck and the fingerboard are made out of composite material, so it feels just slightly different to touch than a traditional wood. And in the long term, I'm not sure how well it will hold up. It comes with fine tuners and also geared pegs that makes tuning this instrument a breeze. Because Glasser is an acoustic electric violin, if you play with a rock band that rocks pretty loud, you will very likely experience some feedback. You see, the acoustic violin is built like a speaker amplifier, mechanical speaker amplifier. And because of that, it can also act like a microphone. So then it will pick up all the vibration from around you, amplify it, then put it into the pickup and then blow the speaker. So very unpleasant noise. Luckily, the Yamaha SV255 Silent Violin Pro can help us with that problem. Because there's no real resonating chamber here, or body for that matter, feedback should be a non-issue here. Yamaha is extremely lightweight, an external control box reduces the weight of the violin to around 500 grams, so it feels pretty much the same as a traditional acoustic violin. Most of the electronics have been moved to this black box that can be mounted on a pedal board or worn on a belt clip. Here we have treble, bass and volume controls, as well as unbalanced quarter inch and XLR output. You can even run this instrument on a phantom power instead of batteries. One more notable feature is a headphone jack that can give you a live monitoring of your playing during a show. Very useful. The Silent Violin Pro uses two pickups. One on the body, common with the little brother SV200 series violin, and the Yamaha's dual piezo VNP1 transducer bridge. A blend control on the back of the instrument lets you select how much of your output signal comes from each pickup, giving you a lot more control over the color of your sound. Pretty cool stuff. It also has a tailpiece with fine tuners, but unlike the Glasser, it uses traditional pegs for the bigger pitch adjustment. Now, what if you're finding that the Yamaha looks a little bit too weird for you? Uh, it's too much hassle to have that external box and there's just too many knobs. 
The MSI Renaissance violin has this beautiful semi-hollow body without the F holes, so the possibility of feedback is severely diminished here. But in theory, it should sound a bit better than this anorexic looking Yamaha, right? Maker Dan Maloney designed his own transducer bridge that claims to have a superior sound quality. Bridge feet have height adjustment, making it easy to accommodate different setup preferences. The MSI violin is made out of a flamed maple wood that from far away looks like regular fiddle, but the closer you get, the more interesting it gets. This violin, just like the Glasser, uses geared pegs. With that type of pegs, you could easily ditch the piece with the fine tuners because they're pretty much redundant here. Okay, so now is the time for some testing. For best results, use headphones. Response in fast passages amplified. Unplugged volume levels. C string acoustic. C string amplified. Bach, Toccata, Amplified.
before I play those instruments for you with some effects added in, let me tell you a few things that I discovered when I was testing them. There are no really bad choices here. Glasser AE can serve as an alternative to an acoustic violin and the C string sound is actually not bad at all. I need to mention that when I examined the instrument closely, the bridge setup looked strange to me. And after contacting the electric violin store that I bought it from, I confirmed that someone at the Glasser factory dropped the ball. The spacing between the strings is uneven. Not a difficult fix, but if you get one of the Friday built instruments, you might feel a discomfort and frustration with hitting the wrong strings. And this time, surprisingly, it might not be you, but actually the setup is simply messed up. The sound quality recorded through the pickup is a little noisy and maybe not the prettiest. But if you're planning to use it with the sound effects or as an acoustic for the outdoor gigs uh, and you're on the budget, then it's a solid choice. For around $1,050, I think it's a pretty good buy and my five-year-old thinks that this one looks the coolest. Yamaha SV255, the most comfortable instrument to play in this group. Big factor in this is the weight of the violin and bridge setup. I learned that the luthier from the electric violin shop is the one who is responsible for setting the Yamahas when they come in pieces from the factory. And he did a great job. As you can see, the spacing of the strings is pretty much perfect and the curvature of the bridge is just right. So we are much better at finding that G string. This violin sounds most synthetic to me. So if the electric sound is what you're going for, this is the one. Another thing that I noticed is the unnatural chop of the bow changes. You can dial it out by using a high pass filter and cutting off low frequencies, but you will have to get extra gear to make it sound right or use a um, editing software. Moving most of the electronics to an outside box has its pros and cons. On the pro side, you get lighter instrument, direct headphone monitoring, lots of output options, and defined control over the sound. For the cons, to wear it during a gig, you will need to have a pretty beefy belt. And for the ladies out there, that might not always be the preferred fashion choice. The cable connecting the violin to the control unit is 10 feet long. So it means that when you're wearing it on your belt, uh, you'll have to bunch the cable somewhere to hide it away from the audience. And if you're uh, using the box on the floor, it gives you a limited movement on the stage. You can sort of have to stay planted. Luckily, the cable appears to be regular male-to-male 3.5 millimeter stereo cable, so you can customize things. But again, extra hassle. In spite of some challenges that need to be addressed to fully utilize this violin, Yamaha gives us a solid performer with a lot of options and a great comfort. At $1,845, this violin is a very popular choice by many professionals. And if the four string version of this violin is good enough for Lindsay Sterling, then it might as well be a good choice for you. The MSI Renaissance. If the best sound quality is your absolute priority and you have the resources to get it, then saying you get what you pay for is very true in this comparison. This instrument has only one knob, but the quality of pickup, design and workmanship is, is just head and shoulders above the others. Uh, there is a sort of natural reverb that comes from the semi-hollow body and the pickup signal is the cleanest of this group. When you manipulate the volume knob, you not only are affecting the dynamics, but the color of the sound as well. At $3,295, this violin is more than the price of the other two combined, but it also sounds the best. Okay, let's rock.
Now, to answer the question, which one did I buy and why? At this moment, I'm stuck at home talking and playing for strangers on the YouTube, although some of you are becoming my friends, which means a lot to me. Here's the list of my priorities. Uh, I need an instrument that is easy to record well in my home studio. In the future, that hopefully will allow us to perform live again. Uh, for my non-classical activities, I need a violin that will do well in a rock band. That eliminates the glasser for me. Yamaha or MSI then? The looks are subjective, but I'm a bit of a traditionalist, so the MSI is more attractive to me. And the fact that from far away, it almost looks like a normal violin, but once you start to notice the weird stuff, it feels like you are invited for a sort of a visual journey. And that is very compelling to me. As a professional classical violinist, I'm very spoiled with the acoustic quality of the instruments. So in this case, my ear is forcing my wallet to fork over the extra money. And you guessed it. I bought the MSI Renaissance. Why did I buy a five string violin? Well, that is a story you can discover in my next video. See you then.